Hello YouTube, Cards with Michael here. Just doing a little core 2021. I guess our little first look at a booster box. Let's get to work. Oh man, the reprints in this set, pretty bomb, pretty bomb. I would say that it's also pretty cool that, uh, you know, draft packs, you can still get the borderless versions, which I think are actually the nicest versions of the planes lockers. Uh, the borderless reprints, of course, are in these draft packs, so these draft packs aren't that bad. Uh, unlike, uh, you know, Iphoria, especially Theros Beyond Death, these will be not too shabby, I think, not too shabby. All right, let's do this. Look, Planeswalkers, got Liliana, got all Teferi action, Chandra, of course. Do we have anything else? Anything else? Huh? Nope. Just, just looks like these three arts for now. Um, let's go ahead and do some cracking. So yeah, usually what I'll do is the first box, it'll just be me, it'll just be me, um, the sponsors. Just like the, the good old days when I was, uh, you know, opening Icoria, always for me, before I had, it, you know, all you guys sponsoring. Oh man, what the heck? Okay, let's let's go ahead and get it, get it started again. We have this Tome Anima. Ah, oh, these are good cards. Hunter's Edge, of course. It's a reprint, functional reprint. All right, here we go. Here's our uncommons. Experimental Overload makes it a little weird. Um, substantiate. All right. Tolarian Kraken. And our first rare, Double Vision. Whenever you cast your first instant sorcery spell, each turn copy that spell. You may choose new targets. Not too shabby. And a foil, Soul Seer. A little tap land and a cool angel token. Look at that. Dang, I love it. I love it. All right, all right. So far, so good. So far, so good. That first pack, a little foil. All right. Oh man, the the print on these are okay. These are not Japanese produced, so they're a little different. Um, I wonder when we'll be able to draft these like in paper though. That would be really cool. Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest, our first shrine. Oh yes, they reprinted the shrines, look at that. And a Heartfire Immolator, all right, all right. And a See the Truth. This card might be actually worth something. I think it actually was kind of cool in, in terms of play. Look at the top three cards of your library, put one of those cards into your hand, and the rest of the bottom of your library in any order. If this spell is cast from anywhere other than your hand, put those cards into your hand instead. So, base case, it's a sorcery, look at the top three, put one of those in your hand, the rest in the bottom. Sweet. Really cool case if you cast it from anywhere other than your hand, you can just draw three. Uh, there are ways to do this. There are definitely ways to do this. Oh, what's this? Uh, okay, it's a little arena advertising card. Oh, okay, yeah, right. That is cool. That is cool beans. All right, here we go. Oh, look at that. Keen Glide Master, target creature gains flying until end. That's actually really insane. Two mana for two one with an effect like that. That is really good. Oh, look at that Alpine Watchdog. Cute. Oh, look at that. A cute dog. Rise again, of course. I don't really know how effective this card will be in limited. It is nice that it's a common, but like Colossal Dreadmall is one of the best cards you can reanimate. If you go to Scryfall and you, can, you just kind of check, there aren't that many cards that are kind of C six CMC or better. Uh, this card I think will will actually outperform in that deck just because you can actually put an insane amount of counters. Uh, Jeskai Elder, we'll reprint from Cons, Havoc Jester, and whoa, our second pack, no third pack, Grim Tutor. All right, all right, that was a good hit. That was a good hit. Alrighty, guys, Grim Tutor Mythic. All right, first Mythic of the box. Yeah, I'll keep that separate pile. All right, here we go. Back number four. Let's do this. Whoa, forgot. <laughs> that little showcase art. Weird they didn't put anything in this, but that is kind of cool. That is kind of cool. All right, Sabertooth Mauler at the beginning. Oh, I, I love this card, by the way. At the beginning of the end step, if a creature died this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter. Um, uh, it has to be on your end step, by the way, but that is not a hard thing to do. Shock, of course, a classic. Swift so response, dub. <laughs> That's all the card. Dub. All right. Kite Self Freebooter. Awesome that they reprinted this. Cool that it's in standard. Season Hollow Blade. Not as excited for this. It, it is kind of uh, worse than the Vampire. A 3 1 Vampire. Because, you know, I, most aggro decks would rather pay 4 life than discard a card. But, you know, uh, you know that's, the card, that's the effect. It is a free discard outlet, though. Hey, I love this. Look at that pack leader. Cute. He is the leader of the pack. Oh, and the the text is so good too. He will be your loyal come. He will be your loyal champion, and his pack, your protectors. All he asks for is a fully a full belly, a spot by the fire, and all the love in your heart. Oh man, pack leader, 
What a cute dog. What a cute dog. Love how they did that as a theme. That is pretty sweet. And so far this box has been pretty sweet. New stuff is always amazing to open. Always amazing to open. All right. And here we go. Whoop. <laughs> Another one of these. All right. Get a place out of those guys. Uh, Grasp of Darkness. It's insane to me that this is a common, by the way. That is insane. Pretty much insane. I thought this was an uncommon. And uh, only recently did I know that it became common. So I think it's a really, really good card. And I can't believe it is actually just straight up a uh, common. Whoa, we got a Teferi. Look at that. Uh, I think this is the, the coolest Teferi of them all. Um, I actually studied the Teferis last night to, to prepare for this. And um, basically, this is the coolest because it's the most drastic art. And wow, two mythics already. Grim Tutor and Teferi. And those are good hits, too. I think there's some of the better hits. Of course. Oh man, Teferi. What a card. What a card. Oh, and by the way, like, this card will be insane in multiplayer because you can activate abilities anytime. So you can activate it once on your turn, once on your opponent's turn. Just really good. Just so good. Like, you can tick it up to 10 a lot faster than you think, especially in multiplayer. All right. Oh, here we go. We got another dog, Igneous Cur. And <laughs> what a funny card. Just a straight up one mana, one three. All right, all right. Yeah, I don't understand the point of that card, but, uh, you know, it is it is able to play offense and defense. Hey, Cultivate. That is a neat card. Oh, my favorites. Leaf Gun Avenger. They kind of mor morph two cards together. Oh, man. Oh, man. Love it. Love it. And we have a Fearsome Path. Love how they reprinted that. And a Storming Entity. Yeah, I love it. All right. All right. All right. So, interestingly enough, we opened one, two, three, four, five, six, seven packs, and uh, all of them had a dual land except for a swamp. This last pack a swamp. So a lot of those tap lands will be in these packs. That is that is a lot. Um, well, here we go. We got some more. Uh, oh, yes, I love this card. Look at that. Five mana, three, two flying with that uh, bounce effect. Notice it doesn't say target creature your opponent controls. It does say non-spirit creatures. You can't bounce other roaming ghost lights. But you can bounce your own creatures to your hand if you happen to need to. All right. And this kind of is like so lame. Like I don't understand why they printed this. Um, they could have printed the, uh, the, uh, the the card, the instant card that lets it... Oh, yes. I love this card. The instant, uh, what is it? Undying Renewal or something that for a black, plus two, plus oh, when, when this creature dies, I'll uh, put it back into play just so you can get the triggers. That, that card's so much better. Uh, Alpine Houndmaster. I love this. I love how it calls out these exact two dogs, and you can get them, and that's great. All right, Sanctum of Calm Waters. All right. And Conspicuous Snoop. Oh, man. can't believe they printed this, too. Oh, the combos that this card has with uh, the uh, Harbinger, the Goblin Harbinger. Oh, man. I can't wait. I can't wait to see people continue to use them. I mean, we, we already know the combos exist. Kiki Jiki, this, Harbinger. You know, make a make a bunch of these and then you know make one uh as a kiki it's just like <sighs> well let's see well, let's see if it gets banned or anything but you know i think it's a really power powerful combo and i'm excited i'm actually really excited all right and we'll keep going two mythics so far not too bad not too bad for a box valorous steed we had a throne of eldrain we had the exact opposite and now we have a unicorn making a <laughs> a knight instead of a knight making a unicorn all right, here we go. We have Cage Zombie. I think this card is great. This type of effect is so nice. Three mana, two, three, great stats. And then we have uh, Activated Ability, uh, Threatened Lethal. Oh, I love this card as well. Four mana, two, three. Uh, stats aren't so great, but, you know, even getting that trigger once is already really, really good. And if it survives, it'll do it again. Oh, I think this is going to be a premier top tier pick. Um, it's just so good. It's just so good. Um, this is... The card that you want if you're going to be reanimating using that common reanimation spell. The old Bolt Hound. I think this card would be super good as well. Super, super good. And a Brash Taunter. Now, this card will be so funny. It's kind of like Creepy Stuffy Doll. Um, but it is a 1-1. One, one. Uh, the only issue is if there is no other target creature, it, it is hard for it to do that damage. You have to attack with it. Um, but it is it's pretty good. It is pretty good. All right. Um, if they have like a zero something wall, it is worse than stuff at all. And also it is red. So it is color specific, unlike stuff at all. All right. Life must go on. That is the, that is the truth. All right. Chrome replicator. We have in another card 
kind of like Core 2020, that cares about you having duplicates. It is not too hard to have duplicates in these core sets. There are not that many good creatures, and you'll get duplicates. So, you know, base for five, five mana for a four-four, it's not that bad, but, uh, you know, it does encourage you to do, draft duplicates. And honestly, you know, if you're a good drafter, you will draft duplicates anyway, so. All right, all right, Primal Might. What a great card as well. It is both a finisher and a removal spell, so. Of course, Sorcerer's Speed makes it slower, but if you do it on a Trample Creature, i.e. the Dino, what's that guy called? What's that guy called? The 6-6 the, the six, six Dino? You know, you will do a lot of damage to your opponent. Oh, yeah, here you go, Colossal Dreadmaw. Thank you, Pack. Thank you, Pack. I had forgotten. What's this do? Daybreak Charger. When enters the Battlefield Terror Creature, gets plus 2, plus 0 oh until unenter. This is a 2-mana 1. Oh my god, I completely missed this in the spoilers. This card is awesome. Holy crap, Forest ML. The art is so cool. They made this unicorn look badass. Oh man, look at that. So, it's a 2-mana 3-1 with literally upside. That is, and it's an aggressive upside. That is so good. That is so, so good. Holy crap. All right, Unleash Theory, all right? It is kind of like Double Strike, but, you know, not the same exactly. It is, like, a little bit better if you have, like, a fight effect or something, but I would say Double Strike is better. All right, Vir Virin Wingmare, a downshifted card from Quarter 2015, or Magic 2015, and a Containment Priest. All right, all right. Cool little reprint there. All right. And you got a little foil, Hunter's Edge. The card will be sweet. The card will be sweet. And... Cool beast token, look at that. The new border. They're also, they're basically full art tokens, if you think about it. So, that is pretty sweet. Pretty, pretty sweet. All right, next pack. Hobble Fiend. All right, all right, this card's great. It's uh, all these two mana, two one cards of utility. Oh, Library of Larcenus. This straight up just draws a card every time it attacks. Ugh. The power level of some of these commons is just insane. All right, speaking of. Oh, look at that little showcase card. Chandra's Pyroling. I love it. Look at that. So cool. What a cool border. Bolt Hound. All right. All right. Tide Skimmer. Also great. And our first legendary. Here we go. Subira Tulziti Caravaner. Oh. Little three mana, two, three of haste. That's cool. That's already decent stats. Uh, for one mana, another target creature with power two or less can't be blocked this turn, including itself. So that is actually really good. You can get some unblockable damage. And then you can tap it. Discard your hand until end of turn. Whenever a creature you control with power two or less deals combat damage to your player, draw a card. So you can draw a couple cards with that as well. I can see that being really good with flyers. Really annoying little flyers. Oh, that's a cool token too. Look at that. First time we've seen it. Goblin Wizard. There is a card that makes two of these, and this is sweet. Look at that sweet art. That goblin looks smarter and like more lean than, than normal. Alright, we'll keep going. Let's keep going. So like this box is great. I mean. We've been looking at the commons. You know, some commons are kind of just blitz through, but a lot of these commons are just so powerful. They're more powerful than I expect. Like, look, this is a two mana two one that has flash and you can pump it. Like the whole age color gets a two mana two one that just has upside. Sanctum Stone Fangs, this card to me is really good too. Pack one, pick one for sure. This is a two mana and you just start draining them. Like that is, you're not asking for much. This is basically like an un unblockable one one lifelink creature that can't be killed as a creature. So, super strong. Obviously it can't block, but you know, that doesn't need a block. It's getting you a life a turn. Silver Smoke Ghoul, also a really, really good card. Of course, it has value. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. You can sacrifice a draw card. So, as long as you have a gain life outlet, you can loop that a lot. Soul Seer, of course, premium removal spell. And we have our Peer into the Abyss, oh my gosh. Four black, 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 black. Tons of creepy faces. Look at that. Creep, 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 creepy. And the target player draws cards equal to half the number of cards in their library and loses half their life. Round up each time. So, yeah, that, this, it's hard to evaluate in limited. Like, do you target yourself? Do you target your opponent? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I have no idea. I guess you target yourself most of the time. Uh, draw a bunch of cards. And this can easily draw you like 10 cards. And then you hope that, you know, you've stabilized board position. I don't know how to evaluate this card, to be honest. Oh, that's a cool card, too. Let's kind of put it to the side. A foil. Whoa! Our first look at a showcase basic. Look at that. That is cool. That is pretty cool art. That is pretty cool art. And we have a demon token. That is sweet as well. And a foil showcase. Basri's Acolyte. All right, all right. Now keep going. Keep going. We still have, like, a ton of the box left. 
I'm excited. Let me just keep opening. All right, here we go. Secure the scene. Exile target non-land permanent. It's control creates a 1-1 one, one white soldier. Eh, five mana to do that is not that great. Really not that great. Ah, oh, here we go. We got another Grass of Darkness. Sweet. Teferi's Protégé. All right. Another, short, another nice little showcase card. Here we have our uncommons. Notably, we aren't seeing that many showcase cards. In, ooh, our first temple. All right, all right. Nice little reprint. Goblin Wizardry. Sweet. Makes little goblin tokens. Um, notably, all right, we have not seen that many showcase cards in these packs. And so far, as of yet, we haven't even seen a single borderless card. So maybe those will be more rare than, than we thought. But we shall find out. We shall find out. All right. All right. Okay. Here we go. Miscast. Can I target instant or sorcery spell unless it's controller pays three? Eh, I don't think it's going to be that good. I don't know. Thrashing Brontodon. It's like Spell Pierce, but it can't target um, Planeswalkers, enchantments. So I don't think it's going to be as good. Thrashing Brontodon. Insanely good. A little uncommon. Nice that it's getting a reprint. We know it's going to be around in standard for a little longer. And then we have Teferi's Tutelage. This card is great. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent, mills two cards. Um, it's not as good as Sphinx's Tutelage because that had an activated ability, in my opinion. Of course, you get this static triggered ability. Sorry, this triggered ability. So you for sure get to loot once. Um, so they're kind of different cards, but I do prefer the Sphinx's Tutelage just because that activated ability is very important into the late game. And nice little heroic intervention. This card was pushing you know, $12, $13, $14 before the reprint. I'd expect it to go down, you know, $4. Three dollars, maybe. That's my expectation. You know, the non-special, non-extended, just the, you know, the, the plebeian little version of it. I would expect to go down. It is in a standard set now. That is getting reprinted by a million. Standard set with core boosters. It will go down. All right, here we go. Battle Rattle Shaman and Lydianus Standard Bear. All right, All right. That was not too interesting of a pass. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right, here we go. All right. All right. Traitorous Greed. All right. What an interesting card. They keep doing this with threatened effects. Four mana. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature, then add two mana of one, any one color. Like, I don't understand how that's greedy, but, uh, you know, I don't know. Liliana's Devotee, another showcase card. Awesome. It is a zombie kind of, uh, you know, like, I wouldn't say it's a zombie lord because it doesn't give plus one, plus one, but it, it does kind of get that effect. Plus one, plus zero. And at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died, you may pay one in a black to create a 2-2. Two -two. That is actually a very, very powerful powerful effect. That's a very powerful effect. All right. Shipwreck Dowser. This is just basically my favorite of the blue uncommons. Like, it straight up is our Kaomancer, which I already love, um, but it has prowess. And its stats are a little bit more reasonable, but it does cost one more mana. I would do that. I would do that trade. And a little temple. All right, all right. Not, not too exciting. We know the temples are in the set, but the temples have been in... Uh, they were in core 2020, which was literally just a year ago, so it's not too exciting that they got reprinted. In fact, I would wager to say that I'm actually a little disappointed that they were reprinted, but, uh, you know, can't, can't help it. Can't help it. That's what happened. All right, Goreman. Of course, this is going to be a great, great card in Limited. It is not going to be... Uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to sacrifice a creature. There aren't that... In fact, I don't think there are any token makers, um, except for that prowess thing, so... Any reasonable token makers, actually. Um, but, uh, this effect is going to be powerful. It's going to be really powerful. All right. Here we have Primal Might. We've seen that again. It's a little repeat rear. And a foil staunch shield mean. All right, all right. Staunch. Every time I think of that, just think of... Gimli. Lord of the Rings. All right, here we go. We got another Paco. Yeah, Furious Rise. All right. Cool. Bad deal. All right. <laughs> it's not that bad of a deal. Let's let's be honest. The only problem is each player loses two life, which is like, why? Why couldn't you make it drain two life? All right. Burl Fist Oak. All right. Whenever you draw a card, it's plus five, plus two. So on your turn, it's usually going to be a four or five, but it can easily be a six, seven. So, you know, I can see that's uncommon. Ooh, our first little kind of high hit against Azusa. Lost but seeking. All right, all right. Um, I, I can't see it. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a ten dollar card soon. Full honesty, full honesty. Uh, maybe not, not like now, but you know, standard, standard packs. No collectors are Ward of the Woods here. Standard packs with collectors. It's just like you know, we can't expect much. We really can't expect much from the rares. Speaker of the Heavens. I think this would be a sweet one. 
uh, one one you know vigilance lifelink and if you have more than seven life then you're starting life total you can start making four four tokens i think it's not too hard but it is a win more kind of card because you know you have to set up a situation where you are seven life more than you started and your one one is alive and <laughs> And I guess you gotta be able to tap that one one. So I don't know. It feels like a, a lot of hoops to jump through, but I would draft it, pack one, pick one in a heartbeat. There are life gain effects in this and not many people will want them. You will be one of the few people that want them. So not too shabby, not too shabby at all. All right, here we go. Here we go. We got another replicator. Dire Fleet Warmonger, of course, the um, uncommon uh, signpost card. Surprise, surprise, red black is sacrificed again. And another pack leader, sweet. That, that's a rare that we'd like to duplicate. Arc Fiend's Vessel. Ah, oh, the, the foiling on these are kind of weird. Like the card's a little bit darker. Yeah, they're just, I don't know, interesting. And look at that, a cat token. Of course, this is not a cute cat. This is like a, a jungle cat. Jungle cat from the uh, green legendary, of course. You have yet to see. All right, all right. Hey, let's get some non-duplicating rares. That would be great. Unless, of course, that is the, the world that we live in. A world of duplicating rares. Tempered Veteran, I think this card will be good. It is a, like, very, very synergy-based card. All right. Ah, speak of... Okay, so here we go. This makes the cats. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 2-2 green cat token. Uh, it's insane to me that green is the, card, is the color that now cares about drawing the second card. Um, so... And when I say insane, I think it's a, uh, I think it's a little unfair for the other colors, but you know, that's just the world we live in. Foil, solemn, simulacrum, and a cool showcase mountain. All right, showcase card. Of all the foil rares, we are happy to see sad robot. Even though it's a reprint, that's a really nice one. That's a really nice one. All right, a little rare. We can get a foil mythic. What about foil borderless to fairy? That'd be, that'd be so fun for a very first box, to be honest. All right, here we go. Ah, uh, just kind of blitz through these. Garrick's Uprising. We've seen that effect before. Not too bad. Not too bad. Oh, okay. A little showcase rare. It's a Fairy's Ageless Insight. All right. All right. All right. First showcase rare. I'd love to get a showcase mythic. Um, actually, you know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see a Borderless Planeswalker. That is what I'm most excited to see. Um, and that's kind of what I'd be collecting. Ah, another Speak of the Heavens. Okay, another duplicate. There's three duplicates so far. Uh, that is... I don't know. That seems like a lot. I've opened a bunch of bo booster boxes already. And three pairs of rares is, uh... I don't know. Oh, got a little Basri's Acolyte here. Cool little showcase. Um, Alright, here we go. Tavern Swindler. Conclave Mentor. Maze Mind's Tome. Alright, alright. Okay, okay. Not a duplicate, at least. A foil riddle form. All right. And yeah, we'll just go through the rest of the packs. Whoa, we'll get a little Planeswalker action here. Liliana, Waker of the Dead. I think it would be kind of super weak, Liliana. Like, the other Liliana that plus to discard, have both players discard, um, you know... Uh, it was a three mana Liliana that had a better, uh, you know, effect as its down tick. This down tick requires you to have stuff in your graveyard, which is like, you know, it's a little bit more to ask. Um, of course, the three life lost by your opponent if they don't discard is okay. I don't know. I just, I can't see it seeing that much. Ooh, a little scoozy scoos. And yeah, it's a little cultivate. All right, all right. Ah, uh, I'm so sad for you, cultivate. Like, you, you are so cool looking, but collector boosters will make you worthless. And that is sad, but we'll appreciate that we pulled you in a pack, a draft pack, borderless cultivate action. All right, here we go. And we got another pack. Okay, Liliana's Devotee Showcase. And our third mythic, Elder Gargaroth. All right, all right. I don't really think highly of Elder Gargaroth. Just because, you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's... <laughs> It is 5 minutes for a 6-6 six, six that has insane abilities, but it has no enter the battlefield effect. So, I'm not too high on it. It gets killed by every removal spell basically in standard. Uh, it is a cute card for sure, but I'm not too excited. I'm not too excited. Alright, 
Kite Tail Freebooter, Enthralling Hold, Fierce Impact, Temple. All right. Okay, okay. Keep rolling. We'd love to see, like, uh, I guess we, we saw one borderless already. The Cultivate was a borderless card. Funny story, it is a previous common now printed as an uncommon. All right. Upshifted into a rare for its borderless form, but still in the common and uncommon slot when it comes to the uh, collector pack. So, what a card. What a card, Cultivate. What a card. Ugh. It is so sweet, though. That's my first time seeing it, of course. But uh, I can't help but think about how the collector boxes are just going to make that thing worthless. All right. Curion Dryad. Nice little reprint. Pursued Whale. One of the biggest cards that you could actually cast. Actually, this is the biggest biggest possible card CMC wise, uh, not excluding the Hydra. That's a, that's a star star. So it's weird. All the big creatures in this set are blue. If you check, uh, I use Scryfall, of course, CMC seven or greater, or six or greater. Um, they're all blue, uh, or blue has four of them in rare mythic uncommon. Oh, a little Illuminate, nice little Teferi Killer, and discontinuity. All right, our fourth mythic. Who knows where that's gonna go? Who knows? That I think will be one of the money rares, money mythics from the set, because that's just so powerful, so powerful. All right, so as long as it's your turn, the spell costs that much to cast. If it's your opponent's turn, it costs that much. Basically, this is a time lock, if you think about it. Like, on your opponent's upkeep, you cast this, their turn is done. Like, they're done. Like, it is now your turn. They don't get a draw step. They don't get to do a lot of things. And uh, yeah, it is better than it looks. It is better than it looks. Unless you, of course, think it looks insanely great, then it might be worse than it looks. Oh, look at that. That's really cool. A little weird token. How weird. Oh my god. Terrible joke. All right. Got a few more packs left. Jeez, like, so hard for me to do these videos uh, in a reasonable amount of time. I mean, 36 packs, man. And a lot of these commons, it's our first time seeing them. We got another one of these. All right. Uh, so just trying my best. Just trying my best. I love this. Indulging Patrician. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, each opponent loses three life. Three life is kind of the threshold for these kind of things. So, Idol of Endurance. Ugh, I'm not even going to bother with this card. It's just, it's just too much reading. It's too much reading. I don't think it's a good card, so. <laughs> Someone will prove me wrong. And hopefully, no one will connect the dots between me saying it's bad in this video and someone else saying it's great and making a highly competitive standard deck with it. Ah! Sanctum of All. Speaking of highly competitive... Ammon kept playing, super cool. Oh man, I oh, can't wait to pack one, pick one this. Get all the shrines in my deck and uh, proceed to not win, but you know. You got it, you got it. If you open that, you know, just take it. Unless you're in my pod, then then pass it to me. It's it's terrible, it's a terrible card, don't, don't draft it. All right, uh, we got Palladium here, all right. Carrion Grub, Solidarity, Blight Fang. All right, all right. Okay, and the very last pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got one borderless card, all foil solemn simulacrum. We got four mythics. Everything is, seems on par. This is about what I would expect, to be completely honest. Boom! Animal Sanctuary. All right, all right. That is the box. I had a good time opening it. This Teferi, of course, is going to be a nice little hit here. Of course, it's not. It's just a normal, not showcase or anything. Oh, actually, we hit five mythics. Grim Tutor, Discontinuity. All right, I guess this is a pretty good box. And uh, this Cultivate is going to be RIP'd soon. Uh, Solemn Simulacrum, nice little foil. Teferi's Age of Insight, a showcase rare. Bunch of showcase cards. Boom, 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 boom. All right, that's the pack. That's the box. Hope you had a good time watching this. A little first look at Core 2021. And uh, give a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to me for more content. I'll see you on the next one.